One of the big headlines of the week was the resignation of the farming minister and Cornish MP, George Eustace. We had a bit of him just now. Uh, he joins us now. Welcome to the programme. George, uh, you wrote um, a particularly detailed letter of resignation to the Prime Minister. I'd just like to unpack a little bit of it. To begin with, I'm interested in the timing because uh, I can see you're clear you're unhappy with the Prime Minister's concession that there could be a delay to Brexit, that Parliament could take control of the process, but of course that will only happen if her deal is defeated in the Commons, her deal which you support. Now, uh, most people would agree it's got a fighting chance of going through. If it goes through, none of the things you're worried about will happen and you could keep a job which I would say you've enjoyed very much. Well, look, there's a, uh, a principle here, which is what effectively has happened this week is on this issue. Uh, Parliament has effectively taken the executive hostage. It's taken government hostage. It's taken direct control uh, of events uh, as things stand over the next few weeks. And when that happens, if you're a minister, you've got to question uh, whether it's worth uh, staying there as a minister, given that you don't have any power to shape events, or whether it's better to leave and in these critical weeks that are left, uh, where we're going to face some very difficult decisions as a parliament now, uh, shape the debate and actually make the case for us to have the courage, if necessary, uh, to take our freedom first and talk afterwards. We must not uh, be fearful uh, of a no-deal Brexit um, if, unless we are willing to uh, go for a no-deal if necessary. We'll never get any deal at all from the European okay, Union. OK, I, I, I do take that point, but, but you take my point on the timing. That if you waited 10 days, if the Prime Minister's deal is voted through, Parliament will not seize control of the process, none of these things you're worried about will happen, and you will still be farming minister, which, as I say, I've known you for quite a long time. I think you've probably hugely enjoyed doing that job and would still like to be doing it, ideally. But the reality is that, um, as with the developments this week, I think it's a very significant development and a very dangerous one. Because, um, be in no doubt, the course we're heading on at the moment uh, is that there's still a real uphill struggle uh, for the Attorney General to come back with any uh, meaningful concession that will enable people like Cheryl and others like her to actually uh, back the agreement. I will vote for it anyway, but there is a sizable number of people uh, in uh, the party on all houses who are nervous about it. Uh, if that happens, things will happen very quickly. And um, Parliament, I think, at that point would vote to say we will not do no deal. We are too scared to walk away without a deal. Parliament will then demand that the Prime Minister go cap in hand to beg the European Union for an extension. And we all know what would happen next. Um, we would be over a barrel. Um, they would be able to hold us to ransom and dictate terms. So what actually happened uh, this week, I think, is very dangerous. And I think, uh, and I fear, is going to lead to a sequence of events uh, that leads to the final humiliation of our country, basically, where um, the EU dictates the terms of the extension with two or three days to go and with Parliament feeling it has no option but to swallow it. Okay, to Come back to your letter so I can be clear about your preferred way forward. You talk as you have today on this programme about being prepared to go for no deal. You also speak in warm terms as you have in the past about some kind of Norway style arrangement. Those two things on the face of it look opposed but is it the case that what you're essentially saying is we should if necessary have the bravery to leave on the 29th of March but then to seek to negotiate a Norway style arrangement which of course to lots of your Brexiteer colleagues, colleagues is anathema. You are still keen on that particular course. I'm open to it because it's absolutely preferable uh, to remaining in the European Union on our current terms. And I think it's um, preferable to a um, long denial, a long postponement. And I've always been open to the idea of an EFTA or an EEA type arrangement. 
I think some people have been uh, too uh, hasty in talking it down. Uh, they forget that it was actually the British uh, government, the UK, that invented EFTA in the late 50s. Uh, we forged this alliance with Norway and uh, Sweden and Ireland and many other countries. And in my view, we were wrong to abandon it. So going back to something like EFTA, given that we created it in the first place, uh, I think is not as, uh, it's not as silly as some people seem to suggest. OK, uh, George Jesus, thank you very much. Cheryl, uh, you're a fellow Brexiteer. Unlike George, of course, you've been opposed to the Prime Minister's deal. You have, though, on this programme, like George, on the one hand talked about no deal, on the one hand said, well, if Parliament coalesces around some kind of Norway-style proposal, you would go with that. Are you, are you basically agreed with George? What, what I want to see is preferably a deal... Um, but a deal that would keep the union together, as I've made it very clear, I don't think the Prime Minister's um, deal at the moment does that. But I don't, like George, I do not fear leaving on World Trade Organization rules. We trade with a lot of other nations on those terms. With the greatest will in the world, we've seen so many different European Union policies from the Labour Party. And then um, he wants to stay in a customs union, which means that we have to keep freedom of movement, that sort of thing. So Okay, well, no, well, actually, of course, we, we don't know where we went, we're going we, to be we went, with like, Labour next I have a final word from George, but of course, if we kept, if we went for a Norway style arrangement, which you've previously indicated you could live with, we'd have freedom of movement. Mm -hmm. Well, Norway well freedom of that's movement. one of the reasons why I do, and George and I have discussed this, that's one of my concerns. Okay. Um, but I, at the same time, we do have people in my constituency who want an agricultural workers scheme okay, because you, they need you, well, those skilled, uh, George knows skilled all people. About that. So, so, to So, George, as you re return to the back benches, what, have you got any sort of sense of what level of enthusiasm there is for your preferred way forward, possibly some kind of Norway after style thing? We know that there are individual MPs, Stephen Kinnock, Labour MP, uh, one of them, who are keen on that. Um, could this gain traction, do you think? Well, look, it's possible, but um, it, it, the chronology for me in this is, first of all, I will be voting for the Prime Minister's deal because that's on the table and it's the quickest way for us to get an agreement and an orderly Brexit. With all of its uh, imperfections, I will vote for it and I hope that the Attorney General can get concessions so that others might too. But look, um, I think in terms of whether uh, a plan B around EFTA or EEA uh, could become a runner, uh, it really depends on whether people are in the right frame of mind to do it. Uh, the problem at the moment is this agenda has been um, largely dominated by people who are on the Remain side of the argument. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, if anything, you know, undermined it from if the, if the, people if the, who come if the Prime from Minister, more If the Prime Minister had gone for this option a year ago, two years ago, immediately after the referendum, isn't the likelihood that she could have got the cross-party support mm -hmm to get it through, and we would now be leaving smoothly on the 29th of March and moving to a model which you would find very acceptable. I well, after. quite possibly, but she didn't. Um, and so, uh, to use the terrible phrase, we are where we are. There were people like uh, Lord Owen, uh, who had advocated uh, using the EEA as an exit uh, mechanism from the beginning. Also, uh, Conservatives like Dan Hannan, uh, people like Christopher Booker, who's been a long-term campaigner long against the yeah. EU. So, there were some very um, solid people on the Eurosceptic right who argued from the very beginning uh, that, uh, that we should use the EEA as an exit mechanism and also highly respected and knowledgeable people like Lord Owen as well, um, who's uh, had a lifetime's experience uh, of these issues. OK, George Eustace, thank you very much.